Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Uh, one of them is this fly. I'm gonna tie this fly by the end of this video, and I'm gonna include uh, materials at the end of the video uh, as well. Uh, first of all, I'm, I would like to thank everyone who's watching, especially ladies, because I've noticed in my uh, statistics that there are some ladies watching it, so big thanks to them. And now let's get into this. Uh, I'm gonna discuss uh, V-loop technique again as I did in previous videos, where I did some fine dubbing technique with Antron. And now let me show you some things and discuss them with you if you if you like it. If you don't, just skip this part and go directly to tying of this fly that I just showed you. Now, in this part here, I used just Antron as I used in the videos before with Antron V-loop technique. Uh, here I use some ice dubbing in pink and here I mix it up so you can see that like there is some pink antron uh, showing through the, the antron here uh, this one is also UV so it's nice detail to bodies of your fly or our flies and here I'm using a mole fur here you can see it's more thicker I didn't cut it I didn't do anything with my scissors here and this is mole as well just different dubbing technique uh, well different way how I use it here I dubbed the V loop rope more firmly here I just insert some fur into the dubbing loop and twist it in order to get this buggy leggy effect so you can just use your imagination combine materials together you can even combine these two materials andron and mole fur and see what you get now let me show you something else. This is completely different thing, but same style. And it's all about hackle. Now here in the first part, you see this gray one, you can create hackle with CDC. Now you can create hackle with any soft hackle feather, or as you can see it here, you can uh, combine uh, some soft hackle or CDC or whatever you like to do with some ice dubbing as a hot spot beneath it so in this case here I use some uh, baby seal fur and here I used some uh, deer fur so like there are many different techniques you can use them for the nymph legs you can use them for the dry legs uh, you can like just imagine whatever you want to do with this and, and just do it and uh, let me show you like from the front side it looks like a real hackle. You can trim it from the downside and you can get like a spent effect. You can do many, many things. And one of the things I did before is when you use soft hackle, uh, sometimes just like on the skin, on, on the pelt, there's like only huge feathers left. So what you need to do is you need to put those in a clip like so and put them very shallow and then cut them so in this matter you matter you're, you're gonna get shorter fibers which is equals to like smaller feather so that's how you compensate if you don't have something uh, right at your hand there so this these are a few tips what you can do and now let's tie the fly now let's start tying this uh, nymph for sight fishing it's almost as sore as pheasant tail nymph, a little bit more complicated with similar effect and greater durability before everything else. And same effect. So let's start tying it. And for this purpose, I'm gonna use very light hook for dry flies. Uh, the reason behind it is like, I like to use it in skinny water. I like when it sinks slow and slowly, and I like to fish it for fish that I can actually see. So it's dry fly hook by RX size 18. Now start your thread which is preferred to be a very thin one. Start your thread usually where you want your thorax to, to start and because this one is slippery I'll just do it a little bit further up towards the eye of the hook and when I'm sure it's secured I'll just cut off this excess. Now when you're tying those flies which are small so like 16 and smaller, uh, everything counts, like every material counts, what you s use, like is it like one, two, three, five fibers of pheasant, uh, tail also counts, everything counts, every wrap counts. So use your wraps 
wisely. So just one, two, stop. That's it. Now use wire uh, as fine as you can find. In this case, it's copper wire fine. Attach your wire to the side. That's like the way I like it, honestly, but you can do whatever you like and go backwards. And now you can create your dubbing loop. You don't cover anything else. So create your dubbing loop, twist the thread so it can get together. And now pull everything back to keep it in position where you want it. And now cinch everything down, go back. And as you can see, there is already a slight taper over here. Stop where you want your body to end. Now for the body, I'm using mole fur, which is quite fine. You can use it for dry flies, you can use it for wets, you can use it for nymphs, as you can see. So anything is possible. It's just your imagination that's limiting a, you or me or whoever. So what you need to do is you need to make this fur like so. So not there shouldn't be any bundles like here. So just when you take everything, like work with it. And when you want to dub it on the, on the one side of the rope here, just take as little as possible, as you can see, and dub it on your rope. Make a relatively tight noodle. And all this noodle should be more or less same uh, thickness along the, as you, as you build it up. That's why it's very important that you use as little dubbing as possible, because with more dubbing, it's very easy to make a mistake and make a not very nice body here. I mean, not it's not that's gonna make, that you're going to create less effective fly, but it's not gonna be as pretty. So just create this noodle. Okay. Now I can see the like it's not very uniform. It's not now in the in the. Now you can't see it. Okay. Now it's better. Now when you finish this, twist the thread very very firmly okay when you get this rope which should be pretty uniform make it tight now you can see that the thread is not visible anymore and make those wraps so make tight wraps because this is like a rope you can almost see segmentation over here and those little spikes they're going to look amazing as you can see just go along okay now the noodle was not so perfect over here but because of the slight taper I created it's gonna be more or less fine okay and this is it I don't need it more now with like one wrap here like very tight and two in front so again one wrap there, two in front. That's more or less it. Okay. Now, use your wire. You can counter rib it. You can rib it in the same direction. It's up to you. If you rib it in the same direction as I'm gonna do now, uh, be aware that the uh, wire can get into those slots. Okay. So it's better that you do it in the opposite way. Okay and go like by some angle to prevent wire into getting in those uh, gaps between uh, wraps. So just go there, fold over wire, okay break it. Now uh, the wing cover is Antron and I like to put it sideways, so towards me first and then just fold it on the other side but keep it on the side so now it's running away from me okay now keep it a little bit over the body it's gonna create nice bumpy effect when you start building thorax now for the thorax I'm using the same fur but the way I'm dubbing it is like just loosely because I want to brush it out afterwards okay just to create some legs 
okay use like more than you need you can always take it off but very important thing to notice is like you need to cinch it down when you tie it on the fly like so and this is enough just pull it out as you can see this is enough I like to con like make a conclusion here just finish it off now you can see the reason why I put those uh, untrun uh, parts like sideways because it lies flat now it creates a really nice effect contrasting that's why I used black one and those flies they they sometimes have almost black uh, almost black wing cases now use sharp scissors for this mine are not sharp as you can see and finish off your fly because this thread is white what I like to use I like to use black marker to cover it up I use like two whip finishes and that's how I secure my fly no varnish no nothing now when you fish this fly you can use it as a dropper of course beneath dry fly my favorite way to use it is on sight fishing I just follow the fish so you cast upstream from the fish as much as you need uh, if the water is very shallow you'd cast a little bit more closer to the fish if it's the water is more deep you just uh, compensate by casting up further further up and then you let it sink you use some very thin tippet for these because it will let this fly sink enough or if you don't want it to sink then you use a little bit thicker one because it will affect this fly greatly uh, the sinking rate will be affected greatly by the thickness of your tippet so just uh, observe what the fish are doing as you cast this fly towards them if they move slightly to the left right even upwards like just slight movement sometimes it's just opening uh, like how they open the mouth just set the hook it's there probably so guys thank you very much for watching i hope you like this video i hope you like this fly and see you next week